Hey Tommy, how you doing? I'm uh, I'm using your name and I'm making video responses because number one, I want views, which really is the only reason anybody replies to anybody, is so that they can get views. Uh, <laughs> seriously though, I, some of your last couple of videos, I feel like I need to comment in regards to because I I see all of it leading to a lack of self-esteem. Now, for example, one of the videos that you put up was of black children saying that white people looked better than black people. I think the youngest one that you showed was like five or six. And of course, this is a lack of self-esteem. Not just for themselves, but for their entire culture, for their entire uh, ethnic group. Now, you correctly traced uh, this lack of self-esteem back to its source black women <laughs> I, I know black women they seem to be a, they seem to be the main focus for, of a lot of problems for the black community you know so let's let's um I I, I don't want to talk about these bitches because let's just face it you know they're bitches they're obviously bitches what to do about these bitches what to do about these bitches because the way I see it is it's gonna take a good generation or two or maybe even three of intensive intensive cultural change for the average black woman to stop being a belligerent beastly bitch and be the the Nubian ebony queen that she uh, wants to be. I, I don't know. I, I'm probably using the wrong analogy there, but anyway, self-esteem. Self-esteem. One book that I honestly think should be in the hands of every child in America, especially the black children. I, I say we fund a couple of airdrops over the ghettos of America and start dropping this book on them. Uh, maybe the ones who can read will read it to the ones who can't. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I mean, illiteracy is a big problem also in this country. Illiteracy. We have a lot of people who can't read and don't know what, they, don't know what they're reading when they do read. It's just, it's, it's insane. Uh, anyway, some of the, uh, the aspects of self-esteem are competence, self-respect and pride. You might be saying, well, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. These bitches have way too much pride. No, what they have is they don't have pride. They have arrogance. And arrogance is fear. Arrogance is them seeing their own weakness and being terrified of their own weakness. So they puff themselves up and they're like, oh, I'm the best looking blah, blah, blah. And <laughs> you know, it's like, it, it's, they, you know, they dress themselves up in these god-awful weaves and these, these, uh, long, you know, fake fingernails and all this bullshit. It's just like, they're broadcasting to the world how ugly they feel. And they, they've become a caricature. They, they just are. They're a caricature of an actual black woman. Anyway, uh, what are some, you might be asking, what are some uh, effects of high self-esteem? Uh, rationality, realism, which is a respect for facts, intuitiveness, knowing that shit's going to happen um, before it actually happens, you know. It, it's, like, uh, it's like some kid knowing, well, you know, if I stand here on this corner and try to sell this dime bag of whatever the cops are most likely going to come bust my ass and throw me into a cage. Yeah, that's intuitiveness. It may also be experience. I, you know, you never know with some of these people. So, uh, also, uh, creativity. Independence. <laughs> Let, let's not even, I mean, I could do a whole, you could do a whole freaking show, and you probably have, you could do a whole show on how dependent black people are on the government. You know, it's like the the welfare mother goes to the government, says, where's my free cheese? The government gives her a few crumbs, and they say, well, in return, we want your child to grow up, sell drugs, and then end up in the prison system for the rest of his life. 
profiting our shareholders who have shares in the prison industry. Again, you could do a whole show on that prison industry and, you know, the black man being a victim of it. Uh, another aspect of self-esteem, uh, flexibility, able to make manage change, not just adapt to change, but also manage change, create the change. Uh, <clears throat> you know, there are two very different things, flexibility, you know, being able to, you know, if something happens, you can make the right choices, do the right things. Uh, able to manage change means you want something to change, you want something to be different, you know the steps to go through. Uh, a willingness to admit and correct mistakes. <laughs> I have yet to see a black woman admit a fault of anything. <laughs> I mean, honestly, honestly, I, I have never seen a black woman uh, admit fault in regards to anything. Uh, correcting mistakes. <laughs> Again, I've never seen this in the uh, black community in regards to the women. So, yeah. Um, but another aspect of self, how self-esteem shows itself. <laughs> Benevolence and cooperativeness. <laughs> no, man, no. It's, it's just... <laughs> there's none of that. None of that. Um, among black women. Now, what's sad is the black women keep raising the children in the way that they were raised. So you have a cycle of violence, a cycle of, of low self-esteem, a, a, a cycle of poverty and depravity and sickness, emotional sickness, psychological sickness, spiritual sickness, physical sickness. You have diseased people trying to raise children. That doesn't work. You know, it just... And, you know, you might... You could make the argument, well, why don't more black men then take care of their children? You can definitely make an argument about that. But seeing the, uh, the viciousness of the black woman, um, you know, it, it's like... I, I can understand why black men... Um, you know, just they, they have the one night stand and they get up and leave. Because honestly, I, who wants to be around uh, a woman who has no self-esteem whatsoever? And I mean, it's just, I, I, I'm not going to go into the totality of the miserableness of the average black woman. Because you do that much better than I can. Uh, but yeah, you know, it's, it's a lack of self-esteem, and I want every black child in America, if you're a white person watching this video and you know a black child, buy this book for them, Nathaniel Brandon's Six Pillars of Self-Esteem. Uh, seriously, it's a, it's a really good book for uh, self-esteem, teach you how to have some self-esteem, develop some self-esteem. And I am dead serious, if you are a white person and you know of a black child, Give them this book. <laughs> if you are a black woman who wants out of her situation and says, looks at herself in the mirror and says, this is not working, buy this book. If you are a black man and know a black woman or a black child, buy them this book. I mean, seriously, this should be required reading for every child in America, especially um, the ones stuck in the, uh, the filthy disgusting ghettos that the, um, that the establishment has created. Uh, anyway, <laughs> hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, if Tommy actually watched it all the way through, uh, <coughs> I don't think he had the time. But uh, I'm certain, I'm certain that some black women have, and uh, they thumbs down me if they could. 